Hello guys, it's Victor here. I posted a Q&A, a short reel, where you could uh, ask some questions on my Instagram profile here, uh, yeah, about a week ago or something, and I received, let me check, 489 questions. So we're gonna go through all of them one by one. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't have time for that. I think uh, you would probably fall asleep if we did so. But uh, I will choose some random ones. And uh, for those of you who don't know which post I'm talking about, it's this one I have here. Maybe you can see it on the camera. Me looking handsome, sitting there. Yes. Insane post, insane editing from Romain. Um, but um, let's get to the first question. There will be some uh, Mandarin questions also, so for those who don't speak Mandarin... Go learn and come back. <laughs> no, but uh, you can just uh, maybe uh, scroll through those ones. Dan Shina, can you say Okay, let's try. First question. Who is your inspiration? Um, and that's a good question because I think I uh, find inspiration in uh, a lot of people in different fields. Um, within the sporting world, I've been really inspired by uh, Federer. I think uh, the way he handled himself on court and uh, the way he played the sport was, um, you know, was really inspiring. But also from Djokovic and Nadal, I know they're different, but still, I think they all have different qualities as individual sportsmen that I really admire. So I try to see if I can find inspiration from, uh, you know, from players like that and take the best from them and try to, you know, see if I can, you know, try to incorporate it in my own approach to things. Great. Next one. Um, bum, bum, bum. If you had to partner up for men's double, whom would you choose? That's a good question. Um, and it's from, oh, I have to, uh, to uh, mention the, the Instagram names it's from it's underscore panavi uh, if you had to partner up for men's double whom would you choose Anders Antonsen, Loken Yu, Li Xifang or Xu Qi by the way please do come to India over next year I will definitely try um, if I had to choose a partner if I only can choose uh, those players I don't know um, but I think if I could choose anybody um, mm, that's a really, really good question. I think I would choose Luke and you because he's a funny guy and uh, he's really explosive and uh, he's a bit shorter than me, so we have one short, one tall, and uh, I think we would have a pretty crazy attack. Great question. Okay, next one from Greg underscore is underscore POG. Um, which match left you a deep impression? I played at and significant amount of really, really impactful matches, uh, at least for myself during my career, um, and I've been really fortunate to do so. But the match which left me with the biggest impression has been the Olympic final, when I won against Chen Long, obviously, because it was the you know, biggest match of my career. Um, but also the 2016, uh, back then, Super Series finals in Dubai, was a match where you know I had been in a lot of finals, and I lost all of the finals, but then in 2016, in the final against Chen away from China, I managed to break through that wall, that mental, you know, hurdle I had in finals, and I managed to win. And uh, you know, since then I've been, you know, winning uh, a lot of finals. So that was a really, a really important match for my career, I think. Great question. Let's have a Mandarin question. This is from Ryan dot zero one one zero, and he asked longer. Okay, and that means if I will have a meetup in Malaysia next time for the Malaysia Open, and um, I will answer Mandarin. Uh, um, okay, next question. Um, Kamle Stubaki asks, what made you not quit badminton after, even after so many years, ever thought of retiring soon? Um, first of all, I'm not thinking about retiring right now at this point. I feel like, you know, as long as my body allows me to practice and perform and be competitive in the biggest tournaments, uh, then I will of course keep playing. I'm only 30 
um, even though it's uh, you know I'm getting older, obviously, but still I feel like I have uh, you know a handful of good years in front of me. So I want to play as long as I possibly can while still being competitive in the biggest tournaments. Um, so that's why I haven't quit. I still feel like I have a long road to go within the sport, and uh, I'm still very motivated to uh, to keep going. Yeah, the next one is from Prince underscore Avana 26. What advice can you give to teenagers to become like you? I love your game. First of all, thank you so much for the support and love everybody. I really do appreciate it. And even though I cannot answer all of the questions, I read all of them and I really appreciate all the good, good questions you have. Um, regarding my advice to teenagers, I think it really, really depends uh, where you are in your career. But my overall biggest advice would be to remember to have fun while you play. Remember that when you go on court and when you go to practice, it should be be because that within your heart you really love to play badminton and you love to explore and you love to get better and uh, it should always be fun to play. Um, I see many teenagers who get way too serious, way too quick and it starts to get you know really boring and they're training, they don't really have any fun and stuff like that and then you will burn out in the long run I think. So even though you should be serious when you're training, I still think it's really important to have you know enjoyable training sessions where you play around with the shuttle. Um, yeah, so that would be uh, that would be uh, my advice. Okay, next one. Let's try to get a Mandarin question here. <laughs> uh, CFF CFF of Corsi ask Long Ge, your Chinese is very good. Tell me how to learn English. Okay, I think learning a new language is a very good thing. Um, for me, learning English is very good. 呃，中文呃，真的给我带来很多机会，而且呢，给我机会交很多新朋友。呃，所以我我建议每一个人，他们都呃开始学习一个新的语言。呃，为了学习，我觉得最好最好的办法是有一个个人的老师，但是我知道这个可能有点贵。所以呢，另外的一个建议是，每次你开车，呃，或者呃，比如说休息啊，或者。呃，骑自行车，呃，什么的，你可以听你想学习语言的那个播客，这个帮助我，帮助了我很多。我记得很清楚，我刚开始学习中文的时候，每次开车去训练的时候，呃，我是听呃中文的播客什么的，所以这个是我的一个建议。另外呢，最后一个是，不要害怕说出来，就是说，虽然我的中文还是。很差，就是说还是有很多进步的空间，呃，但是呢，我不怕说出来，这个也是帮助了我很多。Next one is, have you faced it? This is from just underscore no dot cruise dot underscore whatever. It's a really hard、uh, Instagram tag. <laughs> have you faced a specific challenge that unmade unmotivated you? Mm, I would say that of course during a career you will have times where you feel a little bit unmotivated or. You know, you feel maybe things are going against you and stuff like that. But I have always, you know, only had that for a period of time where maybe with some, you know, disappointing losses or maybe you have been injured. Especially for me, when I've been injured and I'm feeling like I'm missing out on a lot of stuff, that has been, you know, a little bit unmotivating. However, then when I start get going again and I start to feel that I'm getting, you know, healthy and I, you know, gaining momentum. Um, then I start to get motivated again. So I think the most important thing is that you always have to take the small steps、um, in your, how can you say, in your、um, in your in your training and in in your way of you know improving. And if you succeed within the small steps, you will start to gain momentum. And then once you look back after some time, you will realize that all those small small steps. You know, ended up being a big, big leap in your、uh, improvement.、Um, so I always try to tackle one small thing at a time in order to give myself the、um, to give myself the momentum in order to improve in the big picture as well. Okay. Okay. Next one. It's Mikhail C. Ask the secret of your footwork, and there is no secret to my footwork. The secret is that I've worked extremely hard for a lot of years on my footwork, and I knew that when I start growing taller, that I would have, you know, 
not a disadvantage, but there was some necessary steps I had to do within my training in order to keep moving, you know, fluently on the court. That meant a lot of footwork, um, you know, sessions, small, you could call it like microdosing footwork every single day with spending maybe 10, 15 minutes in the warm up doing footwork after practice, doing the weekends and stuff like that. And I think for people who want to improve their footwork, they should obviously train their footwork. Doing shadow footwork is not necessarily fun, but it's necessary for people who want to improve the footwork. So you should be okay with doing some of your cardio sessions or spending time just doing footwork and working on the small steps and all the, you know, all the skills within the footwork. The Hong underscore XUU ask arc shape 11 or 100 cc and uh, you know that, that's the two best raggers I've ever played with that has been the arc shape 11 and the 100 cc uh, right now I'm using the Yonix um, Astrox 100 100 cc Kurenai and uh, that is for sure like a legendary racket already and you know I'm really really obviously happy with it but the arc shape 11 was also a great racket for me and um, yeah, I could for sure still play with that one if I had to. Uh, if I had to choose, it's hard. I could play with both, to be honest. So I can't recommend either or. This is from uh, Melde underscore Wiebe. And uh, it's in Danish, but he uh, asked, what is your favorite fruit fr uh, food from uh, McDonald's? <laughs> if you ever eat something like that. Um, and I actually don't, I can't even remember when I ate McDonald's last time. Uh, but my favorite will probably be um, a Big Mac, um, if I had to choose. Uh, but it's really, really a long time ago I had, uh, I had McDonald's. I don't eat it very, very often, but if there is no food around and I ha really had to go eat something at McDonald's, it would probably be a Big Mac. That was a good question. And then there's another one, food-related question. For your oats, do you eat it with milk or is it uh, oatmeal made on water and why? And usually, I always, as you know, you know the hardcore fans who have followed me for for some years now, they know that I eat oatmeal before every single match, and um, I usually carry like a package of oats with me no matter where I travel, and uh, I always eat it with. Um, I make oatmeal with water, and that's basically how I eat it. Um, it's very filling, and I seem to perform really well on it, and I eat it every single day. So it's on water, oatmeal, and. I love it. Okay guys, there has been so many good questions on this post, so I might have to do a part two someday uh, with all these questions. I really do appreciate every single one of them. Thank you so much. You're the best fans ever, and uh, I'm so happy that you're also following this YouTube channel and that, that you're so, how can you say, um, that we have so much engagement on my post. I really do appreciate it and I, you know, yeah, I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. And um, we will try to keep posting, Romain and I, and we will try to do our best. Thank you once again, and I hope you, um, you liked uh, my answers. See you in the next, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and comment and give thumbs up to this video. It helps the channel grow, and it helps us keep this channel growing. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, see you in the next one.